Greetings, Podlings! I'm Funky Monkey, and I'll be your operator for Matrix Month. Yes, the House of Love is dedicating four whole episodes to the Wachowskis' reality-bending sci-fi masterpiece. And why? Because I happen to like the Matrix saga, and that's all the reason I need. Let us begin, then, at the beginning. Released in 1999, The Matrix is a sci-fi action blockbuster set across two worlds. One strikingly similar to our own, the other radically different. Keanu Reeves stars as Thomas Neo Anderson, a seemingly ordinary office drone whose true value and destiny will change his life forever. So jack in and get ready to free your mind as we enter The Matrix. Meet. Thomas Anderson. Office drone by day, hacker by night. Woken by his computer, he is told to follow the white rabbit. That's a nice trick. Oh hang on, no, that's next movie, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry. Which leads him to meet with Trinity. Which in turn causes him to be late for work the next day. At his desk, Anderson receives a package. And a visit from the agents. But Thomas Anderson is still just a man, and gives himself up. The agents offer a respectable deal for Anderson's services, but our protagonist has better ideas. And I'll spare you the gruesome body horror of the following scene. You can thank me later. After another call from Morpheus, and a literal and quite visceral debugging, because the agents had literally bugged Anderson, with a robotic prawn-looking device, which crawled into his navel. The freedom fighters had to remove it to make sure that Neo wouldn't just morph into an agent mid-sentence. Like you do. Anderson goes to meet the great man himself, and is offered another choice. Neo takes the red pill, and awakes in the real world. After being ejected from the power plant which housed his mortal husk, he is picked up by Morpheus's ship, the Nebuchadnezzar. After a period of rebuilding, Neo, along with the audience, is introduced to the concept of the Matrix. Now, I usually don't like to do this, but I'm going to provide a bit of explanation on what he's talking about here. The information provided to us by our senses is merely electrical signals interpreted by our brain. The Matrix fakes these electrical signals and sends them directly to our brain via the main spinal jack. Neo reacts badly to the starkness of the truth. What he does take well is combat training. And we're skipping the dojo scene. It's visually sumptuous, yes, but it's mostly spectacle. But freeing your mind is not an easy thing to do. And there's a viper in this nest. This is Cypher, one of Morpheus's crew. He's tired of the war and wants to go back into the Matrix. And to that end, he's struck a deal to deliver the codes to the mainframe of the last human city. Except, those codes are only given to the captain of a ship, and aboard the Neb, Morpheus is captain. The next morning, Neo returns to the Matrix to meet the Oracle, who offers words of encouragement to our hero. But on the group's return, all hell breaks loose. Cypher has led the agents right to their entry and base point. Morpheus will do anything to save Neo, and sacrifices himself. But why? Stay tuned to find out! But Cypher isn't finished yet. The turncoat fries Tank and Dozer, and then proceeds to unplug the crew one by one. But our operator isn't quite dead. And while Agent Smith tries to hack Morpheus' mind, Neo and Trinity set out to rescue their captain. Which they manage, with the aid of a military helicopter. And yes, I have deliberately missed out the bullet time sequence. At the time, it had been very much over-parodied. But maybe these kinds of effects could return now, after so long out of fashion. And so, Morpheus and Trinity escape the Matrix once again which leaves Neo to battle an angry Agent Smith in the subway. Our hero holds his own, which is considered to be no easy feat, 
and even manages to subdue Smith with a passing subway train. But Smith won't be denied, and while Sentinel robots are homing in on the Nebuchadnezzar, Neo makes a run for the exit. But oh dear. But this isn't the end for our hero, not in this movie. And the power of love? We're almost at the end, just go with it. Resurrects our hero, more powerful than before. This then is why Morpheus freed Thomas Anderson, because Neo is the one, the prophesied person who can defy the rules of the Matrix and end this war. Our first taste of this is when Agent Smith will not be denied, and gets soundly defeated, and subsequently exploded from within. And with seconds to spare, the EMP is fired and the Sentinels go down. And so our movie ends with Neo embracing his destiny as the saviour of humanity. So then, that was The Matrix. And I just have to put this one into the house of love. This is the high tech, high concept, high kicking Acuna from the crazy sisters that broke straight through the glass ceiling. The swirly effects remain as awesome as ever, the story is thought-provoking but also action-packed, and the casting is perfect. Hugo Weaving snarling Agent Smith, Keanu Reeves' pitch-perfect confused dude that finally rolls back around into cool, and Lawrence Fishburne's wise Morpheus all add to the mix. If I have one criticism, it would be that the romance seems slightly tacked on and not organic. But I'm nitpicking. This is a fine movie. Neo, I believe. So thanks for watching. But this is only the beginning. Matrix Month continues next week with The Matrix Reloaded. Be there! <laughs>